devotionals for this morning. Our scripture reading is taken from the book of Second Chronicles, chapter 27, from verse 1 to 6. Second Chronicles, chapter 27, from verse 1 to 6 is our scripture reading for this morning. Most my humble self will be key, but let's pray before we begin. Jesus, we well, thank you for the privilege to be alive today. We well, count it a great privilege to be alive among the 8 million people to be on the surface of the earth today. More than 47 million people have died this year alone. Just this morning, more than 46,000 people have died. But here we are, we are alive. Our loved ones are alive, our siblings are alive, our children are alive, our neighbors are alive. We didn't wake up with any sad news this morning because you've kept us, because your hand has preserved us. You didn't allow the will of the enemy to catch up with us. Therefore, Lord, we've come as a family, we've come as individuals to say, Father, we thank you. Isaiah chapter 9 verse you sent a word unto Jacob. We've come to receive a word from you. We've come to receive the right word. We've come to receive the revealed word. Lord, speak to our spirit, speak to our soul, speak to our minds, speak to our bodies, speak to our finances, speak to our health. In the name of Jesus Christ, grant us a new beginning. After this meeting, thank you for your wisdom. For in Jesus, now we'll pray. Amen. Second Chronicles chapter 27, verse 106. Jordan, Jordan was 25 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 16 years in Jerusalem. That's most of us too. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father Uzziah did. Let's move to verse 3. He built the high gate of the house of the Lord, and on the wall of opera he built much. Verse 4. Moreover, he built cities in the mountains of Judah. And in the forest, he built castles and towers. Verse 5, he fought also with the king of the Ammonites and prevailed against them. And the children of Ammon gave him the same year a hundred talents of silver and ten thousand measures of wheat and ten thousand of barley. So much did the children of Ammon pay unto him, both the second year and the third. And in verse 6, the last verse, so Jotham became mighty because he prepared his ways before the Lord is God. When the Lord blesses one, grant us understanding in Jesus' name. I read again for emphasis, Second Chronicles chapter 27, from verse 1 to 6. Verse 1, Jotham was 20 and 5 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 16 years in Jerusalem. Verse 2, and he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that his father Uzziah did. Verse 3, he built the high gates of the house of the Lord, and on the wall of opera he built much. Verse 4, Moreover, he built cities in the mountains of Judah, and in the forest he built castles and towers. Verse 5, He fought also with the king of Amorites, and prevailed against them, and the children of Ammon gave him the same year a hundred talents of silver, and ten thousand measures of wheat, and ten thousands of barley, so much did the children of Ammon pay unto him, both the second year and the tenth. Six the last verse. So Jotham became mighty because he prepared his ways before the Lord is God. May the Lord bless his word and bless and grant us understanding in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Jotham was a young man. Began to reign, he took the seed of his father. He was 25 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned for 16 years in Jerusalem. He was relevant for 16 years. No one could kick him out. The Lord kept him. The Lord praised that him. I see you reign in your field of endeavor. I see you becoming the renowned researcher, the renowned scientist, the renowned engineer. There are now a medical practitioner that is being sought after in the name of Jesus. You're going to be relevant all through the time of your service. You're going to be relevant. Your time was relevant. You'll be relevant in the name of Jesus. But not only there's something that propelled him to be relevant for these 16 years. So he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. He did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. You can't see a man doing the right thing in the sight of the Lord, I will not be I will not be referenced by men. You can't see a man doing the right thing in the sight of the Lord, 
I will not be referenced by men. You want me to reference your deed, your act, then do it the right way that the law have said. I'm not talking about doing the right way in the eyes of the people, no. Doing it the right way in the eyes, in the sight of the Lord. Or you do it in the right way in the sight of the Lord, then believe me, you're going to become super successful. I see God granting you a new beginning from today. You will do the right thing before His eyes. And when you do that, you will be sought after by men in the name of Jesus. He said, according to all that His Father Uzziah did, he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord according to all that his father Uzziah did. So he had a legacy being left for him from his father Uzziah. And I tell parents, I tell us parents, what legacy are you leaving to your children? I'm not talking about legacy of properties, of land, legacy of ministry and so on and so on. I'm talking about the legacy of good will, legacy of what? Of character, legacy of righteousness, legacy of the fear of the Lord. He did that which was right because that was what his father taught him. I see you teaching your children the right way. Remember, children learn only by the things they see their parents, the things they see their guardians do. Whatever you tell a child, he might not listen to you. Maybe after what, after his hands are born, he will listen to you. But only the things he see his father or his mother do, those are the things the child does effortlessly. I see you having a good legacy for your children, for your generation, for your lineage. You are unborn in the name of Jesus. As to say, he built the high gate of the house of the Lord. And on the wall of Ophel, he built much. He built the high gate of the house of the Lord. I see your heart being connected to the house of the Lord in the name of Jesus. As you are making giant strife in your field of endeavor, don't forget, there's a place called Zion. Don't forget, there's a place where you have to also show that your heart is there and on the world of orphans he built much i see you building much for the orphanage i see you building much to assist the widows the widowers to assist children genuinely need help children that are without parents i see you doing so much to bless and assist your communities where you're from as far as moreover he built cities and the mountains of judah and in the forest, he built castles and tower. I see you breaking new grounds in the name of Jesus. Those environments, they think nothing good doesn't come out of it. You're going to build castles there in the name of Jesus. You're going to build towers there in the name of Jesus. The Lord will put so much wisdom in your heart that the things you conceal will come to manifestation. And when it comes to manifestation, the whole world will come to celebrate. In the name of Jesus. Moreover, he will see this in the mountains of Judah. So put it in your heart that you want to build. Put it in your heart you want to build industries. You want to build factories. You want to build cities. You want to build estate. And that will put it in your hands. My father used to say, anything that it is in your heart will soon be in your hands. Anything that is in your heart will soon be in your hands. If it is what? If it is genuine. If it is, if it is right in the sight of the Lord. I added, if it is right. In the sight of the Lord, and it is in your heart, God will put it in your hands. It is a matter of time. Whatever that is right in your heart, the Lord will put it in your hands. It is just a matter of time. He fought also in verse 5 for the king of Ammonites and prevailed against them. He fought also. You have to fight. You have believed in your place of honor, in your place of dignity, in your place of blessings. There are giants. In your promised land, there are always giants. I will contend with you. I want to challenge your authority there. There are giants who want to challenge that this blessing does not belong to you. And as such, you need to rise up and fight. And that's why we come here every morning to fight on our knees, to fight with the word of the Lord. And I see God granting every one of us victory in the name of Jesus. As we pray scriptures, I see scriptures being fulfilled in your life in the name of Jesus. You have testimony to show in Jesus. And so he fought also the king of the Ammonites and prevail against them. And the children of Ammon gave him the same year a hundred talents of silver and ten thousand measures of wheat and ten thousand of barley. So much did the children of Ammon pay on him for the second year and the third. Why? Because he has defeated them. They became his slaves working for him. Anyone that have made himself your enemy, he will go down in the name of Jesus. You will possess their substance. The Lord will bless you. No ramification in the name of Jesus. Whatever they do shall be for your lifting 
in the name of Jesus Christ. And verse number six says, So Jotham became mighty. You become mighty. Your children will become mighty. Your spouse will become mighty. Your home will become mighty. Your business, your factory, your industry shall become mighty. In the name of Jesus. I see your school, your, your university become mighty. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Because he prepared his ways before the Lord. Because he what? He prepared his way before the Lord. You can't come here every morning preparing your way before the Lord. And you have a bad day. Not possible. And therefore I decree from today. You will always have a good day. In the name of Jesus. From today your day will always start well. Your day will always start with good sales in your shop. In the name of Jesus. Your day will always start with good news. In the name of Jesus. So let's pray. So we go. Verse 1 said, So Jordan, Jordan was 25 years old when he began to reign and he reigned 60. Lord, let me reign in my domain. Open your mouth and pray. Lord, cause me to reign in my domain. Let me reign in my domain. Open your mouth and pray. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I don't just want to be a pushover in the earth. You created me as a prince and a king. Therefore, let me reign in my domain. Let me reign in my domain. You created my father in Genesis chapter 1. Oh, from 26 down, man was created to have dominion. You can tell me to have dominion. Therefore, I will reign in my domain. Open your mouth and pray. I will reign in my domain. In the name of Jesus Christ. So that's right. I will reign in my domain. In my field of endeavor, I will not be a pushover. I will reign. In the name of Jesus Christ. In my career, I will reign. In my academics, I will reign. In my health, I will reign. In my finances, I will reign. In the name of Jesus Christ, I will open your mouth and decree. I will open your mouth and pray. I will reign in my home. I will reign in my marriage. I will, home. I will reign in the name of Jesus Christ. My children will reign in their domain, in their academics. They will reign in the name of Jesus Christ. 25 years old was Jordan when he began to reign. And he reigned for 16 years. He did excellently well. I will reign in my domain. In the name of Jesus Christ, the place where you set me to be a star, I will reign. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I will not be behind, I will be in the top front. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I will reign. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I will reign relevantly. I will reign relevantly. Open one and pray. I will reign relevantly in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I will reign relevantly. Cause me to always do that which is right before you in the name of Jesus Christ. Cause me to always do that which is right before you in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus. Judah did that which was right, which was right in thy sight, according to what his father was I had did. Lord, cause me. Make me a good legacy for my children. Make me a good teacher to my children. Make me a good mentor to my children. In the name of Jesus Christ, make me a good example to my children. Open your mouth and pray. Lord, make me a good mentor, a good teacher, a good instructor, a good example to my children. Lord, let me a good, make me a good legacy to my children. In the name of Jesus Christ, I don't want to be the bad influence to my children, but good influence, good influence, good influence to my kids, good influence to my female children, good influence to my male children. Good influence to my grandchildren, good influence to my great 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 grandchildren, great and good influence to my lineage and unborn. In the name of Jesus, that we hear about my good will, that we hear about my good character, that we hear about my integrity, that we hear about my exploit, and that we will follow suit. In the name of Jesus Christ, I will be a good example to my children. I will be a good example to my great children, my great grandchildren, my great 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 grandchildren. I will be a good example. To my lineage, all unborn in the name of Jesus Christ. My siblings should be a good example to their children. In the name of Jesus Christ, everyone intercess on the son of my voice, everyone on the son of my voice will be a good example to their children. Hosea was a good legacy for Jotham. Hosea was a good legacy for Jotham. I will be a good example to Kephas Jr. I'll be a good example to Princess Tisa. I'll be a good example to Princess Fedora. In the name of Jesus Christ, I'll be, good. I'll be a good example to my spouse, to my parent. I'll be a good example to my siblings, to my cousins. In the name of Jesus Christ, I'll open one and declare it. I will do